Hello everybody and welcome to the third episode of OpenGL Engine slash Game Development Log. This week I've been working on quite a few different topics, but due to my slow internet upload speed I've decided to split this week's episode into two different parts. In all of the clips there will be no screen space ambient occlusion because recording the video in 2560 by 1440 was a bit too slow. So first of all I made quite a few fixes and optimizations in the rendering pipeline. I have also been working on improving the shadow mapping in the engine. So as you can see on your screen these are the old shadow maps and you can see all the jagged edges that the old technique produced. And in this example the map is about 2000 by 2000 pixels. So they're not exactly low resolution. From the intro scene you've already seen the new shadow maps which are much smoother than the old ones. But with the smoothness they bring a lot of new artifacts which are yet to be fixed in the engine. But for the moment being they're just fine. Also I've toned down the bloom a bit so it doesn't look that overpowering. So the next thing I've been working on this week is parallax occlusion mapping which at this moment isn't perfect yet, it still has a few bugs with the camera view but I'm also not certain that it looks quite proper, I will try to fix it and also optimize it a little bit. In this next clip I have increased the displacement a bit over the normal limit so the effect is a bit more noticeable with also some of the bugs that need to be fixed. And now I will show you some of the materials I've used for testing the parallax occlusion mapping. In this next clip I am showing some cliff rock. It would make sense for this kind of materials to also be uh, tessellated and displacement mapped. Which I've already done in my terrain editor video so if you haven't seen it yet I encourage you to check it out. This next clip is showing some spaced out tiles but I should also mention that I've gotten these materials from the website freepvr.com which I will also link in the description. But as you can see the displacement looks pretty good on tiled like uh, materials. This next clip is showing the coral material which doesn't really look that good in this scene but it has its purposes. Up next we have another cliff like sort of material and I think this one looks pretty good for a rock. This next clip shows some blocks on which I think the parallax occlusion mapping works particularly well. If I look at from the sunny side the effect is really visible. Having said that I think the next material looks pretty good as well, which is cobblestone, but I can't say the same for the next material, the oak floor. That doesn't really benefit anything from the displacement, but with another material such as these broken tiles it's possible to make flat materials look good as well, although the displacement here is a bit too deep. So this brings us to the end of the first video this week. If you like this video like it, and if you would like to see more videos from the development log series, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time, bye!